not at all uncommon to read one article where they're talking about the ability of software to do a better job than humans at detecting tumors. Uh, and the headline will be, AI beats doctors in prediction. And then you can read a second article, and once you get three paragraphs in, you realize they're talking about Alexa being placed in a home to help re reorder meds. But the same headline is, AI used to transform medicine. And so there are huge differences between these technologies. And I think what's happening here is we haven't settled on how to even talk about this yet, and it's creating confusion within the market. And so if I describe what I do as cognitive computing, but a competitor describes what they do as AI, or machine learning, or, or data mining, or data science, uh, then it's hard for us to even understand what problems are we trying to solve. Um, so I'm less concerned with the subtle differences between machine learning versus AI. I think there's great People have had opinions on that. But I think for healthcare, it's more important to start with what problems are we solving? And also to move away from this idea that AI, big data, whatever we're calling it, is in some way a, um, a superhuman. Right? So we like to give it names. We, we like to literally give it names, whether it's Alexa or Siri or Watson. Uh, but it's not. It's a set of tools. And like any technology, it has pros and cons. And if you attempt to implement these tools without best practices and milestones and ROI, then it doesn't matter what you call it, you'll most likely end in a wrestling match with the vendor about how best to get out of the contract. So, so. Do we encounter skepticism from clinicians about AI? Uh, yes, but that's because it has been framed as AI is going to transform healthcare by replacing doctors which um, makes for great headlines, but isn't really how this works. Uh, if you frame it instead as a set of tools that can be used to help us answer the three fundamental questions of improving healthcare. What are we doing? Is it working? What should we be doing? There isn't a clinician that doesn't want to do a better job of that. And so a big part of it is moving away from the hype of AI and again, reframing it as these set of tools do a pretty good job of answering a few specific questions that can add value to your healthcare organization. So a big part of what I end up doing when I encounter the skepticism is, in fact, we don't market AI. We don't market cognitive computing. We don't, if you look at our, the website of the company, SIFT, that I'm developing, you will have a hard time finding references to those terms. We talk about care management. We talk about partnering to design, implement, monitor the effectiveness of data-driven care management interventions, and then we don't have to face the skepticism of AI as Terminator coming to replace doctors. The, the key to overcoming skepticism is delivering results, focusing on the right types of problem, and attaching every step of the process uh, to the measurement of what matters. And so nobody's buying AI. There isn't a need in healthcare for AI. There is a need to find patients that are most likely to benefit from a more intense intervention. There is a need to identify patients that would benefit from a serious illness conversation. Uh, there is a need to know which patients with kidney disease are going to end up with dialysis. All can agree on that. So if you reframe what you're doing from AI and healthcare to solving specific problems, and then you attach metrics that matter throughout, how well can I do in telling you the people that need your help? What can you do to actually affect that patient? Who's likely to respond or not? And then ultimately, how can we measure whether or not it worked? If you can do that, th that is the only way to overcome skepticism. Uh, but again, if we continue to have the conversation around AI is going to replace doctors, you'll never get to the point of saying, you have a problem. We know what to measure to get towards solving that problem. Did it work or not in objective, quantitative fashion? The greatest challenge is, are you dealing with a vendor that is providing a solution? or are you dealing with a vendor that's providing a technology? Uh, I think that people are interested in buying solutions to problems, and I think we have to recognize that the technology is a piece of a solution. So I have yet, in my 12 years of working in healthcare, seen the successful delivery, just sort of dropping off of an information technology and having that somehow lead to improved outcomes, lowered costs, new revenues. Um, I have seen, however, close partnerships focused on an agreed upon set of metrics that 
as part of a larger intervention with appropriate executive level support can make a huge difference. And so I would be looking for a relationship, not a vendor. I would be looking for a partner that is focused on solving the problems. And then I would look to incent them in alignment with whether or not they actually solve those problems. So the, the real power of machine learning and AI is the ability to move healthcare from one size fits all to something far more personalized. And if you can become far more personalized, you can now sub-segment your interventions based on the right people, which means you can create success metrics around each of those interventions. And if you can get all the way down the path of mutually aligned incentives for an agreed upon outcome, you're in a very different game than paying a license fee for a downloaded product or a per, per seat uh, cost. And so that if, if I was in a position of trying to spend my organization's money responsibly, that's what I would look for. I think in five years, it'll be pretty silly to talk about AI as the key feature of your product. Uh, we do not, today, we don't look to buy a care management solution that uses a relational database. I mean, th this, is, this is just silly, right? Because we're past that. What makes these methods so useful for healthcare is that they're able to make sense of unstructured data. They're able to combine different sources of data. They're able to create very personalized recommendations. That just matches very well with the nature of healthcare itself. Healthcare is not one size fits all. There is not a rules based approach to treating patients. There is not an average readmission. Everyone gets to their situation in very different pathways. And so these technologies will just be part of larger solutions. You won't purchase services from a revenue cycle management company that doesn't have AI inside because if there is a rev cycle management company that isn't using the free text and isn't using the best method to get you the result, you'll replace them with someone else. Similar care management. Uh, so I, I think it's going to become completely embedded and it's going to be silly to think of it as its own thing. But I think the pathway to that is you are going to see revenue generating billing correction, that sort of thing, that's going to take off first. I would not allow my child to enter med school now to be a radiologist or a pathologist. These are two areas that I think are going to be disrupted heavily by the fact that a big part of their job is to quantify, to assess uh, a set of information that can be quantified increasingly accurately by a machine. And so uh, we're going to see where it's opportunistic and where it's possible. Um, AI and machine learning start to make these diagnoses, not complex medical diagnoses when there is much more to consider than the pixels of an image, but certainly in cases where a pathological slide or a radiological image can be interpreted, we're already seeing AI start to outcompete to do a better job than humans. And then the question is, once it's more cost efficient and more accurate, is it still appropriate to have a human be involved in that, or what is the role of the human as a result. Uh, and then eventually it'll support people that are making more complex diagnoses, not by taking in the collective knowledge of healthcare and, and curing cancer, but by being very focused on very specific problems where the data exists and adding insight to the doctor's existing intuition, experience, uh, et cetera. The greatest threat to everything we've been talking about is the status quo. So over 4%, I think about 4% of healthcare is delivered in value-based models. While most of healthcare is reimbursed in a fee-for-service fee uh, model, there really isn't economic incentive to do a better job of using all of our data to keep people out of these shiny glass buildings. While, and I've not ever met a doctor in my dozen years of working in healthcare, I've never met a person who doesn't want the right thing to happen, but it's very difficult for the system to invest in using their data to get better. If the economic incentive remains that I get paid more money if you come in in an ambulance than if I keep you uh, safe, healthy in your own home. So the, the closing thought is, and this is not political, this is, this is economics, but the closing thought is anyone that has an interest in improving the care of patients and seeing these technologies finally, after 40 years of empirical research, finally realize their potential and start to help patients uh, should care an awful lot about whether or not healthcare becomes increasingly uh, paid for as a result of keeping people healthy as opposed to as a result of deli delivering uh, more services more quickly.